Hi, I'm Scott Mueller, author of Upgrading and Repairing PCs, the world's number one computer hardware book for over 20 years. In this segment, I wanted to take apart both the 3.5 and 2.5 and inch hard drive and show you the inner workings of these drives, show you what components you know, uh, they have inside and exactly how they work. Now, a word of warning, when we take apart drives like this, they're not going to work again. This is actually a destructive process. So don't do this to your own drives that contain valuable data. Now, as uh, part of that though, um, a lot of times when people uh, get rid of a used or an old computer, they want to make sure that nobody can recover any data off of the hard drive. Typically, using software, you have to use a wipe program and go through a fairly lengthy process of wiping the disk. That's overriding all of the sectors on the disk with uh, uh, new information. That will prevent the recovery of any of the old information on the disk. Well, this process can take several hours, if not longer. And also, it requires you to install the drive in a working computer system you know, to run the program, so you've got that additional time as well. And finally, it requires that the drive actually be working. What if you have a drive that's you know, s sort of working, or partially working, or flat outright bad, and you want to just make sure that nobody can get any data off of it? Well, taking apart the drive is certainly a way to do that. And we'll talk about some other things that you can do as far as uh, destroying this data. So, um, so this is both for educational purposes, as is as in to see, you know, the inner workings of a drive, as well as to actually destroy the data on the drive to make sure that nobody else can ever possibly recover it. Okay, now, when taking apart uh, hard drives like this, we're going to need a couple of tools. Number one, I recommend a good set of nut drivers. I have that here, and this has not only you know standard nut drivers, but it also has some very uh, uh, nice Torx bits, and hex and uh, Phillips screwdriver bits. You're going to need various drivers to take apart different drives. Some drives are put together with Phillips screws, but a lot of hard drives use Torx screws. Unfortunately, you'll find that a set like this, um, the, the Torx bits are somewhat large. So what you'll probably need, especially for the two and a half inch drives, are some very small Torx bits. Here I have a 12 piece, mi 12 piece micro precision screwdriver set, which contains some very tiny Torx drivers down to a T6, as well as some very small Phillips uh, screws and flat bladed screwdrivers. But sometimes even that isn't small enough. In many cases, especially with the newer two and a half inch drives, I've had to use a toolkit like this. This is a micro bit set from Weha Tools, which has some incredibly tiny drivers, and some of these are used in some of the uh, very small two and a half inch and smaller drives. So now you've got the screwdrivers. You might also need a few other things like a pair of pliers. I like having a little pocket knife handy, um, and as well as a flat bladed screwdriver because sometimes you're going to have to pry covers off and things like that. So, um, I'm going to use these two drives as subjects. I have a 3.5-inch uh, drive here and a 2.5-inch drive here. I'll remove the 2.5-inch drive now for a second. I'll set the 3.5-inch drive in the middle. And uh, now another thing you're going to want to be careful of is that uh, as you take apart the screws, you probably, you know, you might want to save them. You, you can use a small uh, container like this to uh, drop the screws into. Um, I also like to sometimes work over a foam pad, so when I'm uh, undoing a screw and it falls, it'll land on the foam and not, you know, skitter off uh, into the distance and into the unknown. Now, um, I generally recommend using magnetized uh, tools. Problem is, a lot of the screws used in hard drives are made of stainless steel, so they're non-magnetic. So your your magnetized tools won't will unfortunately not pick them up. But uh, okay, with all that uh, said and done, let's go to take apart this drive now. Because sometimes I like to preserve the platters, I think that they're well. For, for one thing, they make fantastic mirrors. The surfaces are extremely flat and highly polished, nickel plated. I like to not get fingerprints all over everything. So for this uh, uh, for this disassembly process, I'm going to wear some rubber gloves. Not that there's anything you know I'm worried about touching in there. It's just that I don't want to get my fingerprints all over everything. Okay, so now we're going to take apart this uh, three and a half inch hard drive. Now, typically there will be screws around the four corners on the top of the drive, and uh, they may be uh, Phillips screws, they may be hex screws, or they may be Torx uh, screws. In many cases, they're Torx, but in this example, they're Phillips. So I'm going to start by taking off these four screws.
Okay. Now, if you've taken the screws all out of the perimeter of the drive and you still find you can't get that lid off, remember that there are oftentimes screws underneath the stickers on the cover. So kind of feel around and if you feel any kind of an indentation, you can use a uh, pocket knife to dig the, um, the, the label up off the uh, uh, surface of the, the top of the drive in that area and expose the screw that's underneath. Um, this drive doesn't happen to have any screws underneath the stickers, but many drives do, especially in this area here, which is where the head actuator is. You'll oftentimes find a screw uh, here, but not on this drive. So now, with all of these screws removed, I should be able to pry the platter off of this drive. So what I like to do use for that is a flat-bladed screwdriver and kind of wedge it under there. There's sometimes it's going to be tough to break that seal because there's a gasket here and depending upon how long the drive has been assembled, it may take a, uh, some force to get that off. So here, as you can see, I've removed the top and you can see that the top has a gasket all the way around it uh, to seal. So I'm going to set this off to the side now. And now we can see inside the drive. Let's take a look at some of the uh, components that we see here. Number one, you can see the uh, metal platters. Now this drive, I believe, uses metal platters. A lot of the newer uh, hard drives, especially two and a half inch drives, use glass platters. Uh, these are most likely aluminum coated with nickel. Uh, on the two and a half inch drives, they're generally glass coated with nickel. Now I'm going to turn this. As you can see, I can actually turn the platter here with my finger. You can see it spinning. This is the direction that it would normally uh, turn. Now, uh, another thing you might find in some of these drives is an air filter. I see what looks to be like a filter here. So we'll see once we take that out. Um, also, you can see the head actuator. We have this area here. This is where the powerful uh, neodymium iron boron magnets are that uh, uh, move the voice coil that moves the heads. That at the end of this uh, head arm, underneath this, this metal plate, is the voice coil that moves the heads back and forth. And the heads will swing back and forth over the surface of the platter. I might see if I can even move them a little bit. There we go. As you can see, I can move the heads back and forth like that with my hand. Okay, now over here is a head amplifier. This is actually an integrated circuit that's directly wired to the heads that amplifies the signal and then sends it to the logic board that's on the other side. Now, if we're going to continue taking this drive apart, what I'm going to do is to remove the screws holding the head actuator assembly, as well as this head amplifier and any other uh, mechanisms that are in here. So let me see if I can get these screws out. Okay, now with all of those screws out, I'm going to move the heads off the surface of the disc and then try to lift out this head actuator mechanism. There we go. Okay, so I've now removed the head actuator mechanism and the head amplifier. Now, to further take this apart, I'm going to disengage this and pull the head out. I'm going to set these parts down for right now, and we'll go over them in just a minute. So now what I have left are the platters. As you can see, this drive has two platters, so it would have had uh, four heads. Make that out. And um, the platters are held in by four screws on the top here uh, and the spindle motor. So I should be able to take these four screws out, and then I could take these platters out of the drive. So let me see if I can get those screws loose. Now, what you'll have to do is hold the platters from turning by the edge here. Okay, I've now got all of those four screws out. I'm going to lift off this little retainer and now I should be able to take the, the top platter off the drive. There we go. I'll set that down here. And then there's a metal spacer ring 
that spaces the platters. Let's see if I can get that out. There we go. And then the bottom platter. There we go. Okay. Now at this point, you can see the uh, motor mechanism still in the drive. I'm going to turn it over. You can also see here the logic board. This is the circuit board that uh, powers the and, and runs the drive. It contains the controller circuitry as well. I'm going to take uh, those screws out. Okay, with all of the screws out of the logic board, I should be able to disengage that from the drive. Now, um, one thing you might consider is saving the logic board. The uh, logic board is um, something that can fail on a drive and cause the drive to fail. So even though the rest of the mechanism you know, works fine, mechanically the drive is fine, if the circuit board fails, you can't read the data off of it. So data recovery companies, for example, keep an inventory of a huge number of these drive logic boards because you can't normally buy these separately. The only way you can get one is from another drive. So if the, drive, if the logic board was good, save it. You might be able to swap it onto another drive to recover data later. Of course, for logic board swaps to actually work, the two drives must be the same make, model, and even possibly the exact same vintage or sub-model, maybe even the same batch. It really depends on the specific drive in question, you know, who made it and how it was designed. But uh, anyway, it's something worth considering. Okay, at this point, all I've got left are screws for the uh, motor. And now uh, I've removed the motor as well. As you can see here, this is the spindle motor that uh, turns the uh, platters. Okay, at that point, this drive is really uh, completely disassembled all the way down to the bare aluminum frame. Now let's go over some of these uh, components. Okay, as we had the, you know, the platters here, they were on this uh, spindle, I could even set them back on there, separated by a spacer. So as you can see, this is how the platters were turned inside the, inside the drive. I'm going to set that down. Let's look at the uh, head mechanism here. This is known as the head actuator, and uh, right here is the coil. Let me use this pointer. Right here is the coil that we call the voice coil. This is what actually, uh, when, when this is coil is energized, it rides, sits between two very powerful magnets, which causes force to be applied to this to spin this head arm you know, back and forth. It basically rotates around this, uh, this uh, axis right here, so the head assembly goes back and forth like that. Now, if you look at the heads themselves, there are four heads here in two, um, two groups of two. And the two heads are clamped together against each other because the platter is no longer in between them. If I pull on this upper arm, for example, I can actually separate, or maybe I should use the screwdriver here, and I can twist and separate the two heads there. I don't know if you can see that too well, but I'm separating the two heads on that top of the top pair the screwdriver. If I remove the screwdriver, the heads clasp back together. See, they actually apply a clamping force to the platter. So when, in this particular drive, when the uh, drive was off, those heads were resting on the surface of the platter. In fact, they were squeezing the platter. Then as the drive was turned on and the platter spun up to speed, it would force air underneath the heads, between the platters and the heads, and push them off. So then at that point, the heads would be flying or floating on their very thin cushion of air, otherwise known as an air bearing. Okay, so I'll set this aside. And here we have the very powerful magnets that uh, moved the heads. Now, there's two sets here separated by two metal plates. What I'm going to do is use some pliers, see if I can get these apart so we can see them better. Okay, I've now separated these two sets of magnets, as you can see. I've got two sets of sort of curved magnet structures here. These are the very powerful neodymium iron boron, otherwise known as rare earth magnets. Extremely powerful. They uh, stick together with quite a bit of force. Now, what can you do with these things? Well, one thing I like to do 
is to use them on automotive oil filters. You stick these, I stick these to the oil filters on all of my vehicles and it creates a powerful magnetic field that traps metal particles, iron particles that are dislodged inside the engine within the filter. I know that a lot of people have used in vehicles, you know, a magnetic oil drain plugs. Most of them are nowhere near as powerful as this. So this is a free use for these uh, very powerful magnets. Of course, they make very powerful refrigerator magnets or uh, magnets for anything else that you'd want to use them for. But uh, this is something that uh, I do. And one of the reasons I like taking hard drives apart, I like to keep an inventory of these magnets around. Okay, I'll take that off. Okay, so... Um, We've now taken apart the uh, three and a half inch hard drive and seen the various components that make it up. Let's do the same thing with a two and a half inch drive. Now I've got the subject right here. Now this two and a half inch drive uses some very fine uh, screws. These happen to be uh, T6 Torx screws. So I'm going to take all of these out. Okay, all the screws are out. Now I wanted to point out that this one this drive had a screw underneath the sticker here that I had to break through the uh, sticker in order to get to the screw. So there was a total of three, six, seven screws holding this uh, cover on. And uh, then I can use my flat bladed screwdriver to pry this lid off. And there we have it. So now I have uh, exposed the two and a half inch drive. Now you can see the components here are uh, very similar. We obviously have a set of platters, and I should be able to turn these. There we are, set of two and a half inch platters. It looks like this drive has only one platter, so there's only two heads in this drive. Here's our head actuator assembly, so the magnets would be under here. Here's the actual heads. One thing I notice immediately that's different, when I opened up the three and a half inch drive, the heads were over the platter. They were over on the surface of the platter. With, uh, especially with starting with two and a half inch drives, and now with most three and a half inch drives, they have gone away from the uh, technology where the heads actually park themselves on the disc, where they come into contact with the disc. This is that was called contact start stop technology. That means every time you turned the drive off, that air as the platter slowed down, that air bearing would go away, and the plat the heads would clamp against the platters. Of course, it would do that in an inner cylinder safe landing zone area where no data was. But still, every time the heads contacted the platters, there was a little abrasion and where some particles of dirt would then be formed and debris inside the drive. So this was a wearing process. With uh, uh, this technology that's in this particular drive, this is called load-unload technology. That means that when the drive is turned off, the heads swing outward rather than inward, and there's a little uh, protrusion on the head arm that picks up this ramp, and it actually lifts the heads up off, the off the platter and stores them in a parked area completely off the platter and suspended away from each other. So that's called load-unload technology. When the drive would be turned back on, of course, once the platters were up to speed, the heads would be allowed to glide back over the surface. So there's never any contact between the heads and the platters with this technology. It's uh, much more refined. It's what all, pretty much all modern drives use. So that's a difference here. Uh, also notice on this drive, I can clearly see the filter. I'm going to take that out. That's this little uh, guy right here. This is a little air filter. And what that did was as the platters spin, you know, air would be whipped around and any particles that were dislodged would automatically be caught by that filter as they were, you know, being blown around inside this chamber. Okay, now there's uh, several small screws holding the head actuator in place. Oh, here's a little. Um, little locking mechanism 